All right, here we go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rob Strzeski. I'm a middle school technology teacher at Amherst Middle School. And I'm excited to be here today and show you guys one of my favorite technology tools. A free tool, free and paid actually, because there's a, a paid option here. Um, this is a tool that I consider an essential one. If anybody has a mobile device and they think, well, how can I keep my notes, my information on it, but like always have that information with me, Evernote is the answer. And I love Evernote. Uh, how many Evernote users in the room? I think there may be a, a couple, handful, no? Okay, oh, excellent, very new, new group then, Evernote. I'm gonna take you through a bunch of personal and professional uses of Evernote, of how I use it. It has enabled me to go completely paperless, 99% paperless, and I have all my information with me wherever I go, because I carry it in my pocket. I have a uh, smartphone, uh, I happen to have an Android phone. This works on Android, this works on the Apple iPhone, um, tablets, desktops, laptops, you name it, even the Kindle Fire. Anything that has a browser is fair game. It can be used as a way to carry your information with you. So I want to start here on my blog site here because I've created an outline today that I'm going to follow along and I want you to follow along uh, with me in case there's links you want to expand a little bit more on. Start at my blog which is robztraining.com and the very first entry you're going to see here is our summer institute which is this, uh, this workshop. And I have a link, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. Uh, right here it says view my presentation outlines in Google Doc format here. You can click right on that link and that'll get you right to my outlines for the workshops I've been doing yesterday and today. And so here is that outline I've created for you. Now how many are familiar with Google Docs? Anybody? A couple people? All right. Google Docs is similar to Microsoft Word. How many are familiar with Word? Okay. Or Pages, perhaps if you're a Mac user. Um, it's a word processing program. I love using it because it's a live document. I can change links right here, actually even as I'm presenting, and the rest of you all see the changes happen in real time. So nothing is set in stone. I know you came here for Evernote, but I'm giving a little bit of uh, extra. Uh, I, I want to also give high, uh, high remarks to using Google Docs. I've kind of gone on a Microsoft-free diet. I don't use Microsoft Office products anymore. I don't use PowerPoint, Excel, Word. I'm trying to get away from all that for the past two years, and it's been pretty successful. This way I have all my documents with me. They're online, they're living. You can share them out with others very easily. And you just can't do all those things with uh, Microsoft Office and Word. So essential questions. As a teacher, as many of us are in there, how many are teachers in the room? How many are administrators? OK, so we got a mix of both here. Um, essential questions, I always like to make sure that you have something in your head before you walk out of the room. And I want to make sure that you know these essential three things I boiled it down to. Number one is what devices can you use Evernote with? Number two is how do you take a note? A note can be a variety of things, as you'll see today. And the third one is how can you use Evernote in your life, whatever your role, your career, personal or professional life happens to be. So first thing, audience introductions. I did ask you guys if there's any existing Evernote users. So a video introduction. Let's try the one from SchoolTube. Here's an example, a very pertinent example of how Evernote is being used in schools. This is the uh, Montclair Academy, which I'm not sure where in the country that is, but I thought this was an excellent example of students and teachers that are using Evernote in the classroom uh, for a variety of purposes, not just note taking, but for planning purposes too. Now I have to make sure my audio is up. Let's see if this goes. <laughs> Students think in a 21st century environment. Kids aren't sitting down with books and tabbing pages and taking traditional note cards the way they used to. They're looking at videos. They are pulling from research databases. They're pulling from internet websites. Our one-to-one -one program, we've given every student a MacBook computer. We use Evernote as the main tool in my social studies class. One, you can use it for just taking notes in class. And I use it for a really big group collaborated project. Well, I like that I can bring Word documents and PowerPoints and such into it. If I can have everything in one place, where it's indexed and I can search for it, it'd be so much more organized and it would really help me as a student. To teach students Evernote, it's just like watching a kid get on a bike. The light bulb just went off. And I tried to kind of teach my friends about it, and they liked it too when they used it. Because they didn't get that with the paper, but they all of a sudden got it when they saw it in a notebook form on the computer. I just draw it and then I take a picture and we have a shared notebook and so all the kids can just access that day's class notes right then and there without having to do any work. When we showed them that feature, there was an audible gasp in the room. So I knew by then it had kind of caught on. I use another class now. I'm using it in English, social studies, science, Spanish, 
performance ensemble. I actually use it for tech leadership too. Basically everything I can. It's not a new tool to them, it's just a different way of using a tool that they already have. We work with Evernote. I thought that was very inspiring. The fact that every child has access to a digital device. And when you think about it, it's 2012. And this is the United States of America. Education is supposed to be such a priority. Why isn't it that every child has one of these things on their desk? I mean, that's kind of a side note here, but if every child had a mobile device, whether it be a, a tablet like this, a small iPod Touch, anything, any kind of computing device, they would use a tool like Evernote to keep their notes, to keep track of things, to keep track of their schedule, their homework. Everything would be digital in that sense, and there would be no three-ring binders. Because we may live in the three-ring binder world in uh, K-12 education, but when these kids get out to the real world, their employers aren't handing them a three-ring binder. They're expected to be able to use digital devices and, and be competitive in a global world by using technology. So this is a great example, I thought, of a, of a, uh, uh, it's a private school that's doing this, but they've provided MacBooks to every student. Now that's kind of the top of the top. That's you know, over $1,000 per student. There's much in more, less expensive ways such as iPads or you know, $100, $200 tablets or iPod Touches. But all of these devices all work with Evernote. And if some students, not all, but if some have their own devices and some are provided by the school, now it doesn't matter what platform, what brand, what size, it all works. Because Evernote is an app that works across all platforms. Macintosh, PC, uh, iPads, you name it, it works across all of them. So that is our little example of Evernote in schools. The other one I wanted to show you right back to back is the kind of generic overview of what Evernote is. And let's try the one from school two. Hi there. Welcome to Evernote. Evernote is my personal digital assistant, always at the ready to record my thoughts and capture interesting stuff I see. I use Evernote to create notes, clip interesting web pages, store my PDFs, and even snap photos. The best thing... I'm going to pause it there on that screen. Good example here of all different ways to use Evernote. It's not just what you typically think of as a note, which is handwritten or typed. It's more than just text. It could be a photograph of something. Because if you take a picture of something, let's say the... I'll use the back room as an example. That, po that blue poster over there. If I took a picture of that poster, every word in that poster is now searchable text. I could look for the word campus, and all of a sudden that note pops up and it even will highlight over the picture the word campus. So now words that are seen in handwritten notes or photographs of things, those can be notes as well. You can clip things from the web. If you've noticed in my far upper right hand corner there's a little elephant icon up there. What that is is it's called the, the web clipper, the Evernote web clipper. So I can bookmark or clip things from any web page and throw that into my Evernote account. And I'll, I'll be showing you some examples of that as well. And then this is a PDF file, but the, the example they're showing is any file, any file at all, picture, photo, video, PowerPoint, you name it, you can store that file in Evernote. And because you're storing it in Evernote, now you have it on your Windows PC and on your Macintosh and on your iPad and on your Android device and you name it across all the devices. So this is truly note taking, but it's also storage. It's cloud storage, storing your stuff up in the cloud, up on the internet, so that you don't have to carry around flash drives or, or disk drives or, or things like that is that my notes are available everywhere on my computer, my phone, and on the web. So no matter where I go, Evernote is always with me. Right now, I'm building a new house, and Evernote is helping me stay organized and on track. Here's how. This is the wish list for my new house. I can check these items off as we incorporate them into the design. I can easily capture information from a web page by highlighting the area I want, right-clicking, and choosing Add to Evernote. This works in Internet Explorer. Evernote extensions for Firefox, Chrome, and other browsers are available at Evernote.com. Capturing images to Evernote is easy. I've captured hundreds for my home building project using my camera phone, scanner, and from the web to inspire me and help guide the design process. And Evernote magically recognizes words that appear in my images, even my handwritten scribbles, to help me easily find them later. There are lots of other things you can put into Evernote. If you're a premium user, you can throw any file into Evernote, including Word docs and spreadsheets. So there are some of the ways Evernote makes my life easier. You'll soon discover the many ways Evernote can help you. And in no time, your account will go from this to this. Enjoy. And 
it's really true. You, you grow. Everybody I've shown Evernote to, whether it be a, a relative or a fellow teacher or even students, they start out with a couple of notes and then they realize, oh, I could use it for this and I could use it for that and I can keep track of the last oil change I had and the last time I changed the filter in my furnace downstairs and all these different ways to start remembering things in Evernote that they go out from having, like they showed at the end, a few things to many, many things. And the beauty of this is everything is searchable by keyword. So you can just type in the word filter, and then, ooh, there's my furnace filter note, and there's my this note and my that note. And it's a way of like storing information that you just know that you probably can't remember in your head. And if you write it down somewhere and stick it in a drawer, you might lose it, and you might not have access to that if you're at work and you want to get it from home. So this way, Evernote becomes your one-stop place to drop in files and notes and anything you might need in the future, kind of like a digital scrapbook of, of things that you would have. And you carry that with you in your pocket if you have a mobile device or, or a, a portable device. Um, I like this example too because I showed about the home building example. I do a project with my 7th and 8th graders called the Ultimate Bedroom Design Project. And they get $40,000 to spend on building in addition to their house. And they figure out how much for, for $125 per square foot, how much does it cost to build the size of room they want. Then the money left over, they can buy the flat panel TV, the vending machine, the hot tub, the chocolate fountain for the room, whatever things they want to buy. They go out there on the web, they use that web clipper I mentioned earlier, and they clip stuff all across the web and just throw it into their Evernote account. That, that's the research phase. Then when it's time to create the presentation phase, they go into their Evernote account and they pick and choose things. And they say, oh, what was I thinking? I didn't want that. But oh, I'm glad I got that and I'm going to pull that from my notebook. And they assemble a presentation from all this, this digital clips that they make. No paper is used, not one tree is killed by doing that. And the added benefit is they can share their Evernote notebook with the class. And the rest of the class can see stuff and say, ooh, I like that snow cone machine. I'm gonna, that reminds me, I'm going to get a, a cotton candy machine for my room. And so they spur ideas off of one another without anybody sharing any paperwork across the whole class. And I have 100 students. So if you imagine if we did do it on paper, well, we did that as a fun experiment once. We said if each person had 30 pages in their notebook and we wanted a copy for all 100 students to see, how much would that be? And how likely would you be to flip through the pages for 100 different students' notebooks and be curious to see what they're shopping? Nobody wanted to do that. On paper, it makes it much quicker and easier, and, and not one tree is killed in that. So let's come on back to my outline here. And I can talk about now the junk drawer analogy. How many people have a drawer like this in their house? OK. Now, if you think about it, you should, because it's a place you can go to get the stuff you know that you've put there. Maybe I'm doing a painting project, which I am. I'm painting the, the, the bathroom next week because my wife wanted a new color. So I know I can go in the junk drawer and I can grab the blue tape that I need. Maybe uh, my child has a toy that the it's not working anymore. It needs new batteries. So where do I go? I can go to the junk drawer because I know I have some in there. So it's the place you go because you know you put it in there in the past. And this is a physical world example. If I use this analogy and talk about the digital example, that's to me what Evernote is. It's all my stuff I've put in there maybe a day, a week, a month, a year ago. But at least it's where I know I can go to get it. And it could be a file. It could be some information. It could be an audio note. It could be something I got from a website that I thought was a good idea. So the junk drawer analogy, I felt, was a, a good example here. We all have them. We know what that is. If you know the physical junk drawer, you can kind of conceptualize what Evernote would be. It's for digital information, just like a junk drawer where you can go and find what you need. And I have two different branches here. One is my professional life as a teacher, as a trainer, and the other one is my personal life, which is, I have to be careful what I show here because it truly is personal information. Um, but we're going to go through both here and show you some examples. My first professional life example is the whiteboard handwriting example. Now, I can show you Evernote on a variety of devices. I have my iPad here to show you. I have the laptop. Just for ease, since I'm recording the screen right now, I'm going to go ahead and use um, the laptop. I'm in a browser right now, so I could simply open up a new tab and go to evernote.com, and I can use what's called the web interface. No need to install any software. This is what my students do in school, because as you probably can imagine, the IT staff doesn't like it when I go and install stuff on computers. So we get around that. We don't have to do that at all. As long as you have a browser, you can go right to evernote.com. Upper right-hand corner is the web sign-in, and you can sign in to your account and have access to everything that way. Now, I'm going to switch, though, from the browser. And I'm going to open up the Evernote Windows software that I've installed on this computer. And the reason why is I get a lot more features, a lot more bells and whistles when you're running it locally on locally installed software. So you can do it either way, on the web only or on the uh, Windows or Mac computer. So I'm going to go to my, all my notes here. 
from the very top. And I have been using this for about two years. I have 667 notes, which is really not that much. I know people that have thousands of notes. But this is everything from my personal and professional life. And I, I'm not even sure what's showing up on the screen, so I should be careful what, I, what I'm showing here. But what I want to do is my little whiteboard example. And I have a story to go behind it. And the story is um, we were brainstorming about five, six months ago with the principal at Amherst Middle School. And the theory was if there was a capital improvement project, what kinds of things would we include? What would we ask for for the middle school to have? What big things, small things, whatever? And he, this was done right in the morning before school started, so not a lot of time. It was a quick little meeting. We had the whiteboard up there, and he was writing things on the whiteboard. Got to be the bell rang. Kids are coming in. We have to leave right away. And he's thinking, how am I going to capture all this? Should I have the secretary come in and write everything down for me, or how am I going to get that? And I had my iPad with me. And I said, you know what, let's just take a picture of the screen. So I took the iPad, and iPad or uh, smartphone, because either one has a, a camera on it. And I went and I took a photograph of the whiteboard. Now, every single word that was written on there, handwritten, is now searchable text. So all I have to do is remember what was one thing that was written on that board, and then I can find that note. And the one thing that I remember is uh, Dr. Boz, one of our art teachers, he's been there for many, many years, um, had a question about sinks. He wanted new sinks in his room, in his art classroom. So we're just going to search for the word sinks, and I bet you it will show up. That's just the one thing I can remember that was written that whole day. So I'm going to go to notes and I'm going to search for sinks and there it is it filtered it down right away and here is the note I'm going to pop it out so you can see it a little bit larger uh, let's see here I can double click it and there it is and the word that I just typed in was sinks because I knew it was on there and here's all the information searchable text now from that day then nobody had to write anything down uh, after the, the whiteboarding session was done and one nice thing, too, about Evernote is it will actually, did it do it in yellow? It sometimes will, there it is. It highlighted it in yellow right there, showing you that it can find the word you're looking for. Because this might be you know, thousands of words on that page. Imagine, too, if this is a very, very long PDF document, maybe an owner's manual for a product. It'll find inside of files individual words. Um, I do believe, though, you might have to be a premium user. That costs you 5 bucks a month for that feature. And I'm going to talk more about that at the end. Um, but the ability to search inside of PowerPoints and Word documents and PDFs, that is possible as well, besides searching handwritten things inside of uh, graphics, inside of pictures. So there's my quick little example of a professional example, whiteboarding session, just take a picture at the end. What about this being a classroom with a teacher? Maybe a science teacher is doing a lesson, drew up a whole bunch of stuff, or a math teacher. The student pulls out their mobile device, takes a picture at the end, and has everything as searchable text with them forever for all of eternity. So they can go back 20 years from now and say, what was he telling me about the quadratic equation? And then come back and find it because it's part of their Evernote uh, uh, digital junk drawer, if you will. So that's one example. I have a couple more here. Let's switch to my outline. Uh, math homework, kind of what I mentioned a moment ago. This one here, my idea is that since teachers tend to write the homework on the board at the end of the period before the students leave, if the student had a mobile device, even if it's just simply an iPod touch, so not even a phone, just a, a simple iPod that has a camera, teacher writes it on the board, student takes a picture of that, and now later in the day they can search for the word math, or the word homework. And here's what that would look like. I'll search for the word math homework. And these show up now chronologically, my notes. This, the one that shows up at the top of the list is from January 28th of this year. So the words math homework are inside of this PDF document somewhere, which is, happens to be 26 pages. But that's not what I want. I'm looking a little bit more down the row here, and I see here's the one I was looking for from October 12th. And it says math homework. And it's yellow, highlighted yellow, because it knows that's what I was searching for, and it's trying to point that out to me that here it is. This is what something was written on the board, and there's the information I needed instantly. Didn't have to write anything down, just pulled out my phone and took a picture. Now, I did this as a student last summer here at Canisius when I took a, uh, uh, for my administration degree, I took one of the classes, one of those one-weekers, like Monday through Friday every day. And the uh, uh, teacher who was, uh, I forget her name now, but she was a superintendent at Orchard Park, retired, and then now she, yes, yes. Joan was writing things on the board feverishly with uh, chalk, and people I saw were all writing things down. And I thought, why are we writing things down? I just took my phone out. And before she erased the board, took a picture of it. And now I had the entire board captured. Didn't have to write a thing. And everything is now searchable text. So even if I did have good handwriting, and I was practicing those skills of writing information down, now I have to go through pages upon pages looking for what I need. 
Whereas now, instead, just go into Evernote and search for a word that was on the board, and here comes a photograph of that picture. So it changes the paradigm a little bit. Instead of focusing on writing things down to make sure I don't miss anything, I could sit back, watch, absorb it all in, and then at the end, just before she erases it, take that picture, and now you have all the information. I could even take that picture and then share it out with the rest of the classmates. On behalf of me, the rest of them now all receive the notes as well. So now the focus is let's sit and watch and absorb what's happening rather than make sure we don't miss any words that, we're, uh, that have to write down feverishly on the page. So that's a math kind of chalkboard whiteboard example. Business card example. All right, here's a that's kind of personal life too. I have a, a, a company I run, a consulting company called School TV Made Easy, and so I always have needs to produce brochures, pamphlets, and things like that. Um, and I don't do them myself. I ask uh, somebody else to do it. Uh, AV guy that works in our school, his wife, uh, her name is Amy Schnell, gave me her business card, and I'm always thinking, okay, well, what was that card again? What was that phone number? What was that email address? All I need to know is one word, and I know her last name is Schnell. So I can go like this. I can search for the word S-C-H-N-E-L-L, -L, and there it is. Because her name was on that business card, I took a picture of the business card, and then I threw it out. I like to do that. I take pictures of things and then shred them or toss them. Because I know I now have them, don't have to file them somewhere, and you know I'm at school but I need it and it's at home, not an issue anymore. I take a picture of it and then throw it out. Now every word within here is now searchable text, and you only need to know a piece of that puzzle. And so just by knowing her last name, that comes up right there. If I needed an invoice from her that, you know, did I pay that invoice? I could just search for the word invoice, Chanel, and then it would come up that way too. So you start to just take pictures of things instead of writing things down, which saves a lot more uh, time when it comes to keeping notes on things. Um, unit and lesson plans. Anytime I'm planning something out. All right, let's, let's go to that. I'll just search for the word plans. And I have my financial plans. Uh, I probably should narrow it down a little bit. Let's see. I'll do unit plan. And the one I'm looking for, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. I know I have a separate notebook. These on the side, by the way, are called notebooks. I made a notebook called planning that I use for anything curricular related that what I'm doing right now. So my 2012, 2013 planning stages, I'm, I'm here right now in this note. It's kind of a work in progress. As you can see, I even have check boxes because as I finish one of those things, I'll just check it off my list. And then I'll rearrange things number-wise on a priority order. So it's kind of a messy thing, but I can keep editing that note. And if I say, you know what, I'm really screwed up here. I want to go back to like a month ago when I, when I had my thoughts better arranged. You can do that. You can revert back to a previous version of a note. No extra effort on your part to save it. It just saves your work as you go. It's like chronologically saves all changes that you make. So um, I plan inside of here, and I do this just for myself because I know I can access this if I'm at home on my laptop or if I'm out and about, I can use my mobile device or the iPad or a school computer, wherever. I have access to that anywhere that I, that I go. I also could share this out with a colleague. Maybe uh, Bruce Karras is another teacher in my department. If Bruce and I are planning a, a unit together, we can be editing the same document that way. Much like you could do with Google Docs. A few of you said you were Google Docs users. But Evernote, I feel, is better than Google Docs because it is much nicer to work with editing on an on an Apple device like an iPad because it just works. The app is made to really fill the screen and be able to edit a note, whereas Google Docs, not so much yet. Google Docs is good on a, on a standard computer, but when we're talking mobile devices, Google Docs are really not that good to edit yet. It's coming, but it just hasn't, hasn't evolved there yet. Um, on an airplane where you don't have Wi-Fi, you can still use Evernote, and I do that all the time. When I'm flying out to do a presentation somewhere, and the flight out is a great time to fine-tune my outline so I do that in Evernote. So on the plane where there's no Wi-Fi, you can be editing that note. As soon as you get back to land where there's some Wi-Fi, it'll connect up, sync it up, and now that document's available on all the devices, on all the devices that I own that way. So um, it's a tool that works without Wi-Fi, which again is why I think it's a little bit better than Google Docs in that sense, because it's, uh, Google Docs is not fully there yet. Um, and feel free to stop me at any time. I know I'm going fast, but I, I kind of do that because this is, this is kind of like a two-hour presentation compacted down to one hour. So I'm just trying to make sure that I cover all the bases here. And one more professional life example before we switch over to the personal life, and that is the tree octopus activity. Has anybody ever heard of the tree octopus activity? A uh, really good one. If you're, if you're a teacher and your charge is to teach kids about proper searching on the web to see is, is information really true or not true, 
This is an article I found in the ISTE magazine that I'm going to, I like it so much, I'm going to do it next year when I teach about uh, vetting information online. And it's about the tree octopus. It doesn't exist. But a teacher or a department, a school, did a really good job putting websites up and videos and articles that if you were to search, do a Google search for the tree octopus, you're going to think, wow, this thing really exists. It's, it's an octopus that lives in the trees, and it's down in the, in the southern hemisphere. And, and kids start to then develop, oh, here's my report, and here's where you can find it, and here's how they're born. But then it's like, wait a minute, stop. There's no such thing. If you dig a little deeper, you'll see it's a totally made-up, fictitious thing. And it's one of those points where kids go, whoa, but I found so much information. I thought because it was on different websites, it must be true. But it's a good example of, of teaching digital literacy that just because it's online does not necessarily mean it's true. So I wanted to make sure that the resources I need to develop this unit, I wanted to put them somewhere so I had them. So I threw them into Evernote. I threw in web page links. I threw in text that I typed. I threw in pictures that I clipped, a whole bunch of stuff. And I just put it all in as tree octopus. So if I search my entire notebooks, all my notebooks, for uh, tree octopus, Let's see, I might have to search just one word and not two. Let's go to all notes, octopus. There it is, the web research activity. So one note that I took is an actual link to the site, which uh, you, you can do that. The note has really no text in it. It just has, gives me the link so I don't forget it. And the other one was when I was on an airplane, and that's the chance I get to read things because I, I feel like I never get a chance to read those Mag monthly magazines that come in. I was reading it and I thought, this is really great. I want to make sure I do it. So on the airplane, I pulled out my phone and I turned the camera on and I took a photograph of the page in the magazine. That way I know it's all searchable text. And so I can just search for the word octopus and then this photograph comes up. And the link I needed is, was this right here. So rather than write that whole thing down, I just took a picture of it. And now I can search by keyword when I'm ready for using that information. So. Uh, for lesson planning and, and brainstorming, kind of a, another way to use Evernote. Now we'll switch over to the personal life examples. When I'm not a teacher and I'm just a husband, father, whatever, this is how I use it. And one way is I'm booking a flight. What's my Southwest Rapid Rewards number? I got that card and I stuck it in a drawer somewhere at home, but I'm out and I'm not at home and I, I need that number. So rather than write it down or type it in, because I might spell it wrong, instead, I, let me get back to here, let's search for... Um, Southwest. So anything tag Southwest. This could be, well, it's actually way down here. The, anything to do with Southwest Airlines, receipts, um, anything at all tagged with that. And here's the rapid rewards number that I needed. So I, I'm showing you that on a laptop, but if I wasn't home, if I was probably at school or out and about, I would just launch the Evernote app here on my phone and I would search for the word Southwest. And that same note that you saw there would come up on the screen instead. So it's, again, that example of having your stuff with you, your information with you, and not tying it to one specific machine or one device. It's up in the cloud. You just need a device like this that can get to the cloud, that can get to the web and grab that information. Another example, prescription reorders. How many people have prescriptions? Okay, For whatever reason, you have to remember that number to be able to reorder your prescription. Now, of course, if you're really high tech, you're using the apps that these Walgreens and Walmart and all of them have. But if you're like me, I, I take a picture of the pill bottle and then I know I have all the information that I need for it. So one example is, uh, I just had to order last week was for my allergies, like a nasal spray type thing. So I just searched for the word, oh, I'm on the web interface now, that's okay, nasal. And the prescription I need is right there and it actually shows you there's the word nasal and it highlights it and this is the entire thing so why write them down or save these labels or peel them off the bottle or save the paperwork that comes with it why do that just take a picture of it and then all those words on there are, are searchable text and you have all your information that way another example is treadmill parts for my sister-in-law who bought a treadmill very expensive one all of a sudden it wasn't working anymore so I had to do some research and I found out that about every five years you have to replace the belt so I knew that, okay, I replaced the belt for her now, but five years from now, she's probably going to need another belt, and I'm going to need that information again. So rather than put it in a drawer at her house and say, you know, keep it here so five years from now I can go find it, I thought, nope, I'll just take that picture, put the information I need right into Evernote. And so here's what that looks like. Switch over to here. And search for treadmill. And here it is. Now this is a note, a good example of a note, that has a variety of things in it. I have 
a text portion of the note that I typed in. That's the model number of the Norda track treadmill that she has. These are website links that I found that were very helpful to, uh, to show you how to repair things. This is a Word document that I downloaded that showed you the instructions on how to change things. This is a photograph that I clipped from the web that has the um, diagram of all the parts so I could find out which part I needed. And then I used the camera and I took a picture of the actual new belt when I put it on so I had the, the model number of the belt. So you can combine all those things. Links, text, pictures. Um, could even put an audio note in there. I could record 10 seconds of audio and say, remember to uh, put the belt tension loose before you tighten up the wing nut. You know, I could even put in an audio note if you wanted to and speak that in. So notes now are, are, uh, exist in a variety of ways besides just text only. Back to the examples, and we have uh, blood work. I'm pleased to say that my cholesterol score went down. I was told that a couple months ago that I'd have to be put on medicine if I didn't lower it down. So I joined the gym, taking vitamins and stuff, and I actually lowered it down. So um, that's the kind of information that you want to have access to um, over time so that you don't lose, you know, three months ago I had this paperwork, now I have this paperwork, I want to compare the paperwork together. Just scan it in or take a picture of it and throw it in your Evernote account. So let me switch to, the, to this one. And just search for the word blood work. This could be part of the text in the, in the note. It could be part of the title. It could be a tag. Many different ways to do it. So here's from June. Here's from February. Here's from 2009. And this is my wife's blood work. I put that in as well. Now, I scan this in using a ScanSnap scanner because I've been talking a lot about using this device and taking pictures, but you can only do so much. If you have a 20-page document, you don't want to be taking 20 pictures of it because it's just tedious to do. It's, do. it's doable. It's possible. But you want to have more of a streamlined fashion, especially if you're working with lots of paper. So I have in my outline here, I'll jump right to it, the document scanner video. Now, this is not actually me, but I thought this was a... Uh, a good video to show you guys. It's similar to it. I have a scanner much like this here. It folds down to a, kind of like a brick, like a large brick. So it is portable. Uh, the cost is about $200, so it's not cheap. But if you're a high volume user and you do want to go paperless, my theory is scan it and then shred it so that you have the information, all is searchable text, and then you shred the document. You don't have to put it in a file cabinet somewhere and then get rid of it later. So here's a little uh, 44 second YouTube video where the guy's showing you that idea. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm going to show you how to use a Fujitsu ScanSnap with Evernote. So once I have it set up, all I have to do is just push this one button. It's pretty easy. Just follow the steps in our blog. You tie in their software to talk directly to Evernote. You can do it on Windows or on the Mac. It will scan both sides of the document. It will OCR the document and it will put it directly into Evernote. So here you can see this is my Windows computer and here's the document I just scanned. And because the way Evernote works, it will synchronize. And so here you can see the same document on my Mac and the same document on my iPhone. It's Pretty slick. He scanned it. And by the way, the scanner is a duplex scanner, so it scans both sides of the page. If there's a blank side of the page, it will not scan that, so that's kind of nice. And it'll also work if you put the document upside down. It'll right-size the text. So you load that paper in that scanner any way you want. Front side, back side, upside down, right side up, doesn't matter. It'll just scan it through, put it the appropriate way, and it'll skip any blank pages. So I'll do that with stacks of paper. I think you can do up to 20 sheets at a time of standard paper. So I'll just keep kind of a pile on my desk, and when I want to do them all in one shot, load it in the feeder, one button to start it, sucks them through each, each page at a time, and then throws it right into Evernote. And then I just scan, or I'm sorry, I shred or, or toss the paperwork after that. Um, I used to file it. I had a, each month I had a folder. Those folders would get full. I'd have to put them in another place. Then done with all that because now I can search for any word in any of those documents by being paperless with Evernote. And so back to our outline here. Um, jury duty example. I, I don't have to actually show it to you, but I'll just explain it. I, I know that the proof that you've served jury duty is by showing the summons. And so you really need to hold on to that document because I was just called, first time in my life ever, for jury duty, for grand jury duty, a um, couple couple months ago. It was in May, June. And so I wanted to make sure I didn't lose that document in case I got called within the next eight years. I can prove that I've served on jury duty. So I just scanned that in to Evernote, and now I can search for that document. You don't need to have the original. You can just have a photocopy of it, which would suffice for that use. Um, this one I think is really neat. Uh, I went to the doctor, and I knew that he, we were talking about last time I was to the doctor about needing more vitamin B. So I said, you know what, rather than bringing the pill bottle that shows how much is in the multivitamin that I take, I'll just take a picture of the bottle. And I did that. So now in Evernote, 
I could just search for any ingredient, B12 being one of them, in that pill bottle, and there it is. See, that it's really small. I don't know if I can zoom in on it here with you guys, but I can just go up and down. But there's vitamin B12, and there's the information I wanted to share with the doctor. I could search for anything in this pill bottle. I could search for the word zinc, selenium, chromium, vitamin K, thiamine, whatever, and that's all searchable text because it's part of that photograph. So I think that's a pretty impressive feature, whether it be a printed text or handwritten text, that Evernote can search for and, uh, and, and make that part of your searchable world. So now for the many ways to take notes, uh, I showed you the video about the document scanner. I like it, I recommend it, uh, but it, as I said, it's about 200 bucks. There's one from uh, um, Fujitsu, though that's the one we saw. The one I use is from Canon. It's the Canon P150. Um, I kind of like that model a little bit better because it does more than just use for Evernote. It's kind of my one-stop device for any kind of scanning that I have to do. Um, I have one at home and I was able to get my, my school to purchase one for my classroom too. Um, and we were, uh, we were ex even experimenting with that, saying if every library in the school building had a scanner like that, that's the one place the teachers could go to scan in their documents, whether it be to Evernote or to their email account or whatever. Uh, this little portable scanner makes it very, very easy to do that. And it's a nice being a duplex scanner because you just load in your stack of papers and away it goes. Um, the camera on your mobile device, the business card example. We'll actually do one now. Does anybody have a business card? that I can use as an example here to demonstrate. Um, to launch the app, I can either go right into the Evernote icon or on an Android device, you could say, what do you want to do? Take a photo, take an audio note, um, draw a note. So what I'm going to do is take a photograph. So I'm going to hit the little camera button, which immediately takes me in and initiates a brand new note. And it turns on my camera. And there it is. So the camera's on. So I'm going to go and make sure that I'm close, capture all the information. It looks a little fuzzy, but it'll focus itself. There it goes. And so that note is taken. Thank you. It says either retake it again or done. So I'm going to hit done. And then I can add additional information if I wanted to. I could say Canisius Wednesday morning or whatever the case may be. Most of the time I don't. I just save time that way. I just say, OK, it's good to go. So hit done. And upon hitting done now, it's uploading it to the cloud, to the Evernote company, to the Evernote servers. And it's going to be available within a few minutes here as searchable text across any device that I want to use where I can have access to it. Now, sometimes this part comes up, but what about security? If your stuff is available on all these devices, you know, aren't you worried about people having your credit card number, your social security number, and all that? But I say, no, I feel this is more secure because if, if something happened, if this phone got, uh, if someone stole this phone or I lost this phone, I would just instantly change my password on Evernote. Or I could close my whole account down, I guess, but I would just change my password. Therefore, if someone had my phone, they can't get into it because it would prompt them for the password to get into it. However, if someone broke into my house right now when I'm not there, goes through all my files, takes those files with them, I think there's more of a security breach with that, having your items on paper. It's the same theory about credit cards and restaurants. We all say, oh, we're afraid of people you know, stealing our credit card information. But what's the first thing you do at the end of the meal? You just hand that credit card to the waiter or waitress. They walk away. They come back. You don't know what happened to that card. So we trust people with that. But then we get kind of touchy about, you know, well, I don't want to have my information stored electronically. Well, that's where all of our money is right now. All of our money is electronic. And if your company is invested in keeping that information safe, I trust that company more so than I trust my own personal methods of storing my files in my basement or under my mattress or whatever. So you kind of have to think about that information, about storing your stuff. Yes, it's personal. Yes, there's a lot of personal information. But it's not really stored directly on these devices. It's stored out there in the cloud. I'm just using these devices to get there. And if there was any breach of security or whatever, I'd just quickly change my password. And you can do, if you really want to look deeper into it on the Evernote blog, they talk a lot about their security methods, about the, you know, in triplicate, three, four, five different places around the world, data centers that are backed up regularly, where your information is never going to be lost. And I trust a company that does have a paid feature versus giving their stuff away for free. And Evernote does have, I'm a paid uh, uh, subscriber, I pay five bucks a month to have my stuff stored. Because it gives me some extra features, which I'm going to get to in a moment down here. Uh, but it gives me extra features and peace of mind knowing that this is not a free service that I'm using that might just disappear. They are growing at an exponential rate and showing uh, to their investors, to their 
uh, stockholders really great returns because it's such a popular company. It works across all devices, and they're not just a fly-by-night company that's free that could disappear. It's a, it's a company that's been established for a while. So um, the example now, now we've given a few minutes here. Let's check it out here. Go to our notebooks and show me all my notes. And it's going to be at the top. Automatically, it's at the top. There it is. There's a snapshot that I just took of the card. But I'm going to search for, let's say, the word Lawrence. So let's get this off the screen. Just pull something else up at random. And if we search for L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E, -E, anywhere across all of my notes, that comes up. And notice it's the, not the only note that came up. It's the most recent one, so that's why it's at the top. But in this document here somewhere, uh, which is a, it's a PDF document, there must be the word Lawrence in there as well. So it shows all of them, but it arranges it by chronological order, uh, if you so choose. Or you can arrange it by alphabetical order, A to Z. So uh, either way you want to arrange your notes, you can. But now it exists here. It exists on the iPad, on my phone, anywhere I go. I can log in my Evernote account, and I have that information. So um, it's, a, it's as quick and easy as that example with the business card. Let's see where I'm going next here. Typing text, speaking to Mike, email. Okay, let's do this one on the, uh, we're going to do this one on the iPad. So you can see a different device here. And let me go full screen here, and I will switch to a better view for you guys to see. And Evernote on an Apple device looks like the bottom row here. And I'm going to search. I'm going to switch over to the notebook view. Notice across the top you have different views you can go with. These are my notebooks I've created. Now, ASA was a conference I went to, so all my receipts are in there and my presentation materials and all that. So you can make separate notebooks and put your notes within a notebook. So think of notes as being the individual things and notebooks being the place where you can, the hierarchy, where you can organize them. Kind of like folders, if you will, if you're thinking uh, like, a, like a Windows file structure. So if I go to just my general notebook where everything is, you'll see the same idea. From the top is the most recent thing there, and I can access each note this way. And so it's a nice big interface on an iPad to work with. Um, I, kinda, I, I really like it. It's my preferred way to use it if, if uh, I have my iPad available with me. But let's take a new note here just to show you how easy that is. In the bottom left corner is the button that says New Note. And we can give it a title. Touch right on that, and we'll say sample. And I can tag it. If, this, if I want to be even more categorizing with things, I could say this has something to do with a workshop. So anytime I search for the word workshop, there's my established tag already. I'll tag it with that. So things we can put in a note, well, we can simply put in text, blah, 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 just type in some text. You can put in, I like these, the check boxes. So you can maybe make a bullet list that way. Things you want to remember before you leave the house, things you want to make sure you have before you go to work, whatever the case is. You make your list in your little check boxes like that. Uh, bold italics, all that formatting there is ex available. Let's say I want to record, and I don't do this too often, but it, it does exist, so I want to show it here, an audio note. All right, my audio is now recording. I just want to remember to bring the IPVO camera before I go, because I'll need that with the laptop. And so that is a little hit save, little audio note that now gets attached as part of the um, part of the note. Hit that just right, and there it is. So it's eight seconds long. It includes it in there. Let's say I want to grab a photograph. I can launch the camera instantly, and <laughs> okay, I'll switch to the front camera instead. <laughs> I'll take a picture. Let's say use it. And now that got included as well. A uh, uh, common place I do that is when I go somewhere and the presenter's doing their PowerPoints up on the screen and they got something that I want to make sure I don't miss that information, you know, people will see me. I'll lift up my iPad and I'll take a picture of the screen. So I'm taking notes at the top text-wise. I actually hit an audio note so I record what the person's saying. It might be a whole hour or whatever. That's fine. And then I take pictures of the slides too. So within the note, I have all those different types of media uh, saved together. And then let's say, well, I want to grab a picture that I know is on my iPad, on the camera roll. I can hit the camera button, and then it goes, oops, wrong one, uh, this one, the one to the left of the camera button. And you can go to your albums and grab a photograph or whatever you have from there. So you can uh, 
you can include things that are already on your device as well. So here's a picture. I'll just grab that. And that throws it in at the bottom there. So many different ways to do that. You, once you're all happy with it, you hit save. And now it's saving it to the cloud. So in a matter of moments, it'll be available on, across all the devices that I have. Now, this could be a teacher doing this and saying, I want all the students to have access to it. If you were my students, I would share with you that note. Or I would even share with you the notebook. So I could throw in the notes from each class day into that notebook, and you all instantly have access to it. I've heard of teachers that have a different student each day be the Evernote person, and they take notes for the class. And then that way, each day, it's a different person that gets to have that uh, responsibility. But at the end, all the notes were taken by the students for the students. And uh, people can go in and edit those notes if needed, too. So, so talking about collaboration, that's you possible, give too. For people to see the notes. Yes, you can make a note public to the world, which means it's a, it's a URL. Anybody that has the link can get to it. Or you can make it editable by certain people. But to make that happen, I think that may be one of the paid features. They'd have to have the $5 a month account. But, and it, I'm kind of leading into this next, for schools that want to roll this out district-wide, they have half-price accounts for educational institutions. So $250 per student per month. And if it's like the retail side, if you pay for a year in advance, they give you three months free. So it's either it's either five bucks for a user like me a month or was it 45 bucks a year? Whatever nine times five is. Yeah, 45 bucks a year. But for schools, they're doing it for half price. And here's the good news about schools. The school doesn't own the account. So when that child graduates eighth grade or 12th grade, that Evernote account is theirs to keep for life. It just is no longer going to be paid for by the school, but the student retains ownership of it. So talk about digital portfolios all the way K through 12. If they're throwing it into Evernote, now that child has that stuff with them forever, and it's not something that's owned just by the school. It's owned by the student, but the school is just the person paying the bill for it. So I thought that was a very innovative way of doing that. Um, I thought of using Google Docs as a way to have a digital portfolio, but I'm kind of leaning more towards Evernote as the tool for that, because then it could be managed by the student and kept by the student when they leave. Um, and they just, and they, if the student says, you know what, I don't want to pay five bucks, I don't have the money to do that, that's fine. They just turn into an Evernote free user. Don't lose all their information. It's all still there. But now they don't get all the bells and whistles as an existing user moving forward. So you, uh, you, the way that their accounts work is they give you so much space per month you can add into your account. But there's no set maximum limit for your Evernote account. There is no cap on it. They give you, I think, one gigabyte free per month. So you add your gigabyte of information this month. Next month it resets, add another gig in. Next month, add another gig in. And it just keeps accumulating. It never gets to the point where you run out of space. So that's another unique thing about Evernote that uh, is maybe different from Google Docs or other tools for digital portfolios. All right, let me switch back here now to back to this screen and back to our outline. So we covered the many ways to use it, desktops, laptops, iOS, Android, you name it, any web browser, not for the cost. The cost is free or premium. Here's my information I have for you on the premium account. Once you become an active Evernote user, you kind of say, you know what, it's worth it. Five bucks a month is nothing for the benefit I get from being an Evernote user. So being a premium user allows you to have supersized uploads. You get a one gigabyte each month. Without it, I believe it's maybe 100 megabyte or 200 megabyte. I have to see what it is, comparatively speaking, for the free. But, um, so you get more space each month to upload. You have top priority support. So I guess if you're going to call or email them, you're going to get to the front of the line quickly. Um, offline notebooks. This would be like I mentioned, if you're on an airplane or, or in, a, in a tunnel, somewhere where there's no Wi-Fi access, you can still use Evernote and use the offline notebooks and have access to everything. Um, working together, more of a collaboration feature. You can, others can edit others' notes, making a, uh, a great thing for project-based learning. Uh, larger files you can upload. You get 50 megabytes per file that you can upload. Uh, note history, you can go back in time and see past versions of your notes. Um, for security, you can use, when you're using the apps like on the iPad, you can pin lock it so that there's a four digit code that you need to get into it. So another little standpoint from security. Faster image recognition. So when I took that picture of the uh, business card, since I'm a paid user, I get to the front of the line for the Evernote computers to process my image quicker. So maybe I only needed to wait two minutes instead of wait 10 minutes. That's just, you know, might be not a big deal for some, but um, if you do lots of uses with Evernote and you want to have access to it right away, that might be a, an advantage there. Um, hide promotions, that just means when you're using the, 
the software client down here in the bottom right hand left hand corner rather there would be just advertisements that show here so it gets rid of the ads um, for some schools though that is a concern because they students can't use a tool if it has ads in it so that that might be something as well to consider um, and PDF search so inside of those PDF documents every word becomes now searchable text so that's another premium feature there uh, let's review those essential questions here and then we'll get to the general questions that you guys may have. So first of all is what devices can you use Evernote with? Who can raise their hand and tell us? We've hit it over and over and over again. So anything, anything you want to mention in your regards, anything. John? Anything. anything at all. Anything that has a browser on it. So even the low-priced tablets, the Android tablets, to the high-priced MacBook Pros and the iPads, anything in between. It all, it all covers it if it has a browser. Um, how do you take a note? How would you answer that one if someone said, how do you take a note with Evernote? Take a picture. What else? Scan it in. Type it in. Use your voice. Audio recording. All those different ways to take notes. So more than just what we associate with a line paper and a pen of text notes or, or annotations, more than just that. And then the third one, how could you use Evernote in your life? Who would like to share how they envision possibly using this tool? I like that whiteboarding example because it's always a challenge. Okay, you did a lot of work, but now how do we save it? Or we use those chart papers when we do professional development. We write on those chart papers and then they fold them in half and save them. And I go into the principal's office, you've got stacks of them everywhere. I'm thinking you could get rid of that if you just you know, use this thing as a, as a digital capturing device. And then it's all searchable text rather than hunting through the pieces of papers and looking for that thing that you know is in there. You can find it that way. So many different ways to use that, that tool of Evernote. And uh, any general questions that anybody has? Anything I may not have covered? Yes? Can you do the same kind of thing on the free Evernote? Yes. So searchable things and um, searchable? Searchable within photographs, yes. The only thing you can't get is within documents, like within PDF documents. It won't search the words within those files unless it's you're a paid user. A like yes, something. because that was a photograph I took, yep. And those, those are searchable with a free account. And you can, by the way, switch back and forth between free and paid. Um, a couple of the students I worked with last August in the class I took here, I convinced them, let's use Evernote for our planning. And they did. They paid the five bucks for the month of August. But then after that, they can go back to being a, a free user. And they don't lose any information. There's, by downgrading, you're just simply getting rid of the payment. You're not losing any information that you took for that month. So if you're going on a trip somewhere and you know you'll need a lot of storage space, you're going to take lots of pictures, whatever, just for that month, upgrade for five bucks and then downgrade when, when the next month comes by. So you can do that as much as you want as well. Other questions, ideas, concerns? I see a couple. Yes, let's go here. Good good question. If you are if I'm the paid provider and I share it out with you and you're a free subscriber. You can still see all my notes, but you cannot edit them. You're in a read-only mode. But if you're a paid provider and I'm a paid provider, we can edit each other's notes. So as the teacher, you're creating stuff. Maybe you have a paid account. You still can share that out with everybody else, even though they're not a paid member. But they will only get read-only access to it. Uh, question in front here. Um, is everything, say, downloaded onto your phone? So if you Put that five gigabytes a month or whatever to mm -hmm. keep your, you know, your documents still up to date. Yes and no. The apps themselves, and they work differently, Android and, and iOS, they allow you, if you're a paid provider, you have to be a paid provider, to have offline notebooks. So you can pick and choose which notes or which notebooks do I want to have locally, if at all, or none, or keep them all in the cloud. So as a paid provider, you, as a paid subscriber, you have that ability to do that. Other questions, concerns, comments? All right, I thank you guys for coming today.